much for coming. Um, I'm going to try and do a world record. I'm going to try and do 400 years of telescopic astronomy in 30 minutes. No one has ever attempted this feat before. So, without further ado, I'm going to mention four themes. You will get these four themes occurring during this sort of talk. I think one thing that I like, and you may have seen one of my videos, The Heavens Above, episode one, in which I liken four and a half million years, sorry, four and a half billion years, rather, of the Earth's history as a walk. Now, we have some intrepid walkers here, like Peter. I'm 53 years old. I know I don't look it, do I? No. no. <laughs> and if one millimetre represented a year, that is 53 millimetres. And Galileo lived 400 years ago, and that's what my talk's about. And Jesus lived two metres away, 2,000 years ago. And the people that build the pyramids is where my lovely wife's coat is here, about three, four metres away. And then you keep walking every step is a thousand years. Past the Ice Age, 10,000 years. On and on and on. In London, 65 kilometers away, 65 million years ago, there were dinosaurs, which were wiped out by an asteroid. And then you keep walking through Leicester, through Newcastle, to John O'Groats, the furthest point in the British Isles. And then you walk back to Canterbury. Very tired now, aren't you? Each step is a thousand years. And then you walk back again. And then you walk back again. You have to do that journey four times, four and a half thousand kilometers. And remember, each millimeter is a year. So, that's one idea. There's another idea. Who likes digging sand and making sand pits and putting your mum and dad in there? <laughs> yeah? Okay, so you've built your sand pit. Each grain of sand is less than a millimeter. If I had a meter cubed of sand, that's a billion little grains of sand. There are more stars in the universe than there are grains of sand on all the beaches. Bali, Blackpool, California, oh yes, oh yes, Queensland, Australia. Dig up and every single grain is a star. There are more stars in our universe than there are grains of sand. Well, I thought I might live for 70 years because the Bible says I will live for three score years and ten, and that's two billion heartbeats. You might live for 70 years, and you might live for 70 years, and you might live for 70 years. Do you know how many people there are alive today? Nearly 7 billion people. Do you know how many ghosts there are? 7 billion people who have lived and have died. Think about that. Think about the number of seconds those people have lived for, and you are living for. Well, the fact is, there are more stars in the universe than there are seconds of human life since 100,000 years ago. Gives you an idea, doesn't it? Now, let's turn our thoughts to what would happen if we go back 2,000 years and we talk to one of the famous Greek people. You know, Aristophanes, Aristarchus, Aristotle, anybody like that. Right, what do you think? Well, I think but the universe consists of the Earth, and everything goes round. The sun goes round the Earth, the moon goes round the Earth. All the planets, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, they're the ones that we knew about. And all the stars <coughs> lie at the same distance on a crystalline sphere. And at one point, they had 55 crystalline spheres, because obviously, God invented the universe, Obviously, the most perfect thing in the universe is a circle. They all go around in circles, yeah? But if you ever watch a planet, they do retrograde motion every now and again. Now, you can explain this very easily if you have all the planets going around the sun, but they believed in this model. Once you start believing in a model, and you don't believe in evidence, if you don't like science. But there were some really great scientists. I must mention Aristarchus. Aristarchus actually measured the distance to the moon and the distance to the sun. All right, you got it slightly wrong. He said the moon is at a certain distance and the sun is 19 times further away. It's actually 400, but for goodness sake, that's pretty good, isn't it? And Aristophanes, he measured the diameter and he measured the circumference of the earth. He got it within a few percent. My IB students would be quite proud to do that, wouldn't they? can laugh at this point, you know. Right. So, there we have it. And then all these ideas was encapsulated in a book 
not as good as my book, obviously, but it was called the Almagest. And then these ideas were ransacked by the Romans, got to the land of the Arab people, you know, Persia, etc., etc. They had great astronomers, they did a lot of work themselves. And then, through conquest, through Spain, and up through the whole of Europe, these ideas were promulgated such that the, um, the Roman Catholic Church liked these ideas. The fact that everything went round the earth and we're the most important creatures on the planet and God invented us, this is, this is this just right. I mean, when Joshua said, sun, stop in the sky, this is the sort of thing you want, isn't it? And if anyone went against these ideas, what would happen to these people? The Inquisition of the day would try you, torture you, and then finally burn you at the stake, just like Giordano Bruno in 1600. Now, of course, our dear colleague, Galileo, the only scientist I can think of who is known by his Christian name. Think of a scientist now. Say Newton. Uh, Isaac. Isaac Newton. Einstein. Albert Einstein. Hoyle. Fred Hoyle. You don't say Fred. Which Fred? Oh, Sir Fred Hoyle. So the fact is that Galileo is one of the greatest scientists of all time. I think you will agree. And he was able, through his knowledge of the telescope, to start showing the people and the Roman Catholic Church that the ideas that they had held so sacredly for 1,500 years were now about to be debunked. Of course, before him was Galileo, uh, sorry, before him was Copernicus, but Copernicus managed, of course, to publish a book on his deathbed. Luckily, with Springer, I'm still alive, so this book is just about being published when I'm still alive. Now, let's go back now to Galileo. What did he do? Now, at this point, we usually have somebody to represent the sun. Who should that be, Fiore? Who should represent the sun? <laughs> It's Fiori from Albania. Come out, Fiori. Big hand for Fiori. Now we're going to have somebody who wants to be the Earth. Who would like to be the Earth at this point? One of these gentlemen who's holding a glass of wine. Hope you. Hopefully, you say you're over 18. Yes. I right, come out. Come out. And who would wants to be the goddess of love? Obviously, my wife. <laughs> I want you to go round Fury. I want you to come here, sir. Just, just watch what this sign is doing. Now, I want you to point the telescope at Mars. When I say stop, I want you to stop. Stop! Do you agree that is roughly 47 degrees? Say yes. Yes. <laughs> and do you realise that the sun is illuminating the beautiful face of Venus? Do you say yes? How much of Venus can you see? This is darkness, this is light. How much of Venus can you see? Correct. Now I want you to go behind. How much of Venus, uh, sorry, how much of Venus can you see? Can you see the whole face? Face, face the sun, darling. Can you see the whole face? Just say yes. Correct. Yes. Yes. Good. Excellent. So you can see, but Venus is quite far away, would you say? And then Venus come around the sun here. Face the sun. And can you see the sun? And all of this beautiful face is illuminated. How much of the Venus can you see? Say half. Excellent. And when you're here, darling, all we see is a tiny crescent. When I say tiny, though, because you're closer to Venus, you will see a slightly larger view than when you looked at full Venus. Can you all sit down? And big hand for Venus, Earth, and obviously the Sun. You cannot explain that if everything goes around the Earth. You cannot do it. It's impossible. The Greeks said everything was perfect, everything is circles. It was later shown by Kepler that the planets go around the sun in ellipses. Ooh, yeah. What else? Sunspots. The sun is perfect, and yet it had acne. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, Mercury, by the way, his telescope wasn't good enough. It wasn't as good as, say, these binoculars, these beautiful Olympus binoculars. But the lens is about the same size as what he produced, 30, 38 millimeters. Yeah? Yeah. Now, what else? He saw Jupiter. Now we could have a big man like this man here. Jonathan, would you like to be Jupiter, sir? I am looking at Jupiter. On the night of the 7th, the 8th, and the 9th of January 2010, and I see little moons going round. And the next night, they go round. 
and sometimes there's a moon near his ear, and sometimes it's near his nose, and sometimes it's near his ear, and they go round. And he says, hold on, if everything goes round the earth, what about this example? Oh, I didn't like that. Is it round Jupiter? Thank you very much indeed. There is one problem, and Galileo couldn't explain it. You might not be able to explain it, but let's just see what the problem is. I want you to take a finger and blot me out like this, uh, but with one eye. So the right eye will blot me out. Blot me out. This sounds like one of these religious programs. And now, close the right eye and open your left. Am I blotted out? No. There's an apparent shift of my finger by about four or five degrees. And now you're not blotted out. That's called parallax, ladies and gentlemen. If I'm going round the sun and I'm looking at this star, and I'm looking at that star behind this star, I can see them lined up. Six months later, you're lined up with this lady. This is Parker, am I right? Exactly. So, the fact is, they didn't see this. What they didn't know, these angles are so incredibly small. Who likes rifle shooting here? <laughs> Well, as somebody who used to do rifle shooting, <laughs> I used to shoot, and if you look at about two or three millimeters at 25 meters, you're looking at one arc minute. So I'll just adjust it because I'm slightly out by two millimeters, and now, oh, dead center. Now my eye and your eye is accurate to about one arc minute. If you divide one arc minute into 60 arc seconds, you're looking at arc seconds, one three thousand six hundred of a degree. I want you to pretend that I've got an American dollar coin and I go about two or three miles away. I hold it up and you sight along the left hand side of that coin and now you sight along the right hand side of that coin. That's one arc second. That is still bigger than the parallax of the nearest star. That's why they couldn't see parallax. They're so far away.